So I want to read something to you from one of my premier Jagna that I got the opportunity to share with, um, to receive wisdom from pretty consistently for a four or five year period when he was in my town every day. But prior to that, I used to go up to New Brunswick when he had a shrine in a store called Black Gold. And I used to sit at his feet and ask a bunch of questions and probably annoy him. But I was looking for the depth and profundity of his wisdom. And that is my Jegna Infudishi Jehudame's Kamal Salim. Um, affectionately known as Baba Infudishi. And he is a grand master teacher in our traditions, um, very astute in many traditions, his seminal works, um, Kupagani and Gumi, the African martial arts system that is the progenitor of all the martial arts and the spiritual warriors are healers which is the evolution of that work with some addendum, some, some addition. And the brother is just a beautiful and profound brother. He is currently in New York, I believe Harlem, but he's somewhere in New York. Um, but he is in our hearts and minds, everyone who he's ever touched. So he poses the question, what is a rites of passage? And he says, a rites of passage refers to the right sacred and ritual to pass from one stage of life or being to the next. Rites of passage, while universal and existing in all cultures, is a fundamental element in the historical and current educational framework of African people. Rites have existed in Africa throughout the history of the people, being utilized to instill a great sense of community, responsibility, cultural continuity, and spiritual grounding from generation to generation. The elements of community responsible include, among others, responsibility of the individual to his or her family, the role of growing into adulthood, the sanctimony of marriage, and caring for the well-being of not only the community, but also the people in the community. For young people and teenagers, the needs for community responsibility is ever so critical as evidenced in the social ills faced by African youth. Due to slavery, colonialism, war, oppression, and ignorance, African have been separated from the cultural umbilical cord of our ancestors. Cultural continuity would therefore include relearning and reestablishing at least some of the traditions, ceremonies, and customs that are characteristic of our people. When people do not celebrate their own culture, it is because they are slaves of an others. Spiritual grounding has been the sustaining power of our people for over thousands of years, long before we arrived in the Americas. The complex dilemma of rights today is, the most, is that most Africans born in America, even millions in Africa and other parts of the world, belong to non-African faiths. In the days of our ancestors, one could not possibly complete his or her rights while holding the religious spiritual values of another to be more sacred than his or her own culture. What's more so is that we belong to the faiths of the people who have been our historic enemies. In that sense, we have generations of Africans who have not met the rites of passage and spiritual standards of our ancestors. Need I say what happens when a people are disconnected from their cultural lifeblood and foreign alien cultures are injected into their way of life? And so he talks about what are rites of passage is, and then he goes on to have a couple more paragraphs about why a rites of passage is important. And typically we have, in most traditions, we have five general rites. Um, primary rights. We have the right into birth. So when you're crossing from the ancestral realm into this material 
realm that is a rites of passage and not everyone who's conceived is even allowed to enjoy that that privilege as you know we have children who are um dying in the womb we have people who are aborted um we're aborting more people than anybody in the world in the western world because we're having sex with people who we do not want to create a future with or we're involved in things that we cannot um we feel like we cannot sustain and so when the ancestors send us a returning god we um very ignorantly send it back and then expect to be blessed so the first right is birth the second right for men and women comes when you reach pubescence and it usually happens in your third seven um which is 14 to 21 around that time so it may start around 13 um, in, in indigenous cultures, sometimes even 12, but generally not earlier than that. Um, when you are introduced to your um, puberty and it is a sign of your ability to reproduce, etc., And so you have to be ushered into manhood. And in most civilized culture, you're a full-fledged woman or man even though you are a new man or woman, you are a full-fledged woman or man right around 16 years old. So the secondary right, the second right is crossing into womanhood and manhood from girlhood and boyhood. The third right is crossing into leadership, um, becoming Jagna, becoming Jenok, right? And that process that announces to the community that you are a seasoned adult. You're not a neophyte or a new adult. You're a seasoned adult, adult and you have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding based on your experience and your collective interaction with the group, with the collective group, which are interaction with the collective group. Then you have the fourth right, which is eldership the leadership of eldership. Now you're post 50, 55, and you're moving into a eldership. Now, these are the right system of this, this, this model that I'm giving you is the rights of recent times. And when I mean recent times, I'm saying the last 60, thousand years, the last 6,000 years, and even you could go back to 50,000 years. Prior to that, our life, our physical life was so much longer than it is today, as we are told by the elders that the right system was much different. But we could say that this rights that I'm describing has been in place for about the last 6,000 years since the creation um, or the appearance of the new races that are on the planet. And so we have your birthright, your manhood, womanhood right. Then we come in into your um, elder rights. And then we go, or your leadership rights, or your, your seasoned adults. And then you go into eldership. Now you're dealing with, you are the wise. You are the wise counsel, the wisdom counsel of the community, of the clan, of the tribe. And your function is to advise because you have the farthest hindsight, the, the um, deepest insight and the farthest foresight because you have been practicing observing the cycles of time, et cetera, et cetera, and understanding the symbolism of nature and, um, natural phenomenon that happen in your surrounding. And then finally, the final right is to prepare for ancestorship, the crossing over back into the spiritual realm where you will relay the condition of the, uh, the, the, the community to their ancestors, to those that are their cultural parents, grandparents on through eternity etc cetera, etc cetera. so you have a functionnaire and then you prepare to take your 
place amongst the ancestors and serve from the spiritual side. Now, prior to the time, this time period that we were in now, we did we never died accidentally or um, as a result of some disease or et cetera. We would complete our function over a very long time, much longer than we're living now. And then we would perform the final ascension rituals and lay down um, in the group of those that are ascending with our family present. And we will ascend back into the oneness where we would attach, detach our consciousness from our, from our body. But during this time of imperfection in this cycle that we're in, that is not the way that we ascend anymore. We make our transition in a, a bunch of terrible ways because of the way this time period was designed for us to experience that. That's a whole nother lesson, but my point is, is that there is to give you an understanding of what a rights is, and then to give you an example of the five primary rights. Now, of course, as you go through your lives, you go through your tribes and your clans and different regions, there's a multitude of secondary and tertiary rights that are specific to your life purpose, to your function, to your clan, to your tribe, etc. But the five general ones are universal for us all. And so it's important for us to understand, and I'm saying this because a lot of people think, or in our ignorance, we only understand the rights into initial manhood and so or womanhood. And so you find a lot of lost adults who are saying, I'm way past the age of a right, or you have a little bit of cultural understanding and you don't think that a right to passage applies to you. This is absolutely wrong. And this is one of the reasons why I'm honored to offer a Koma King and Nawasha is offering a Koma Queen to our brothers and sisters who are interested in taking a perpetual rights. The frameworks that we are using are thousands and thousands and thousands of years old. And of course, we are adding a multitude of things that we have gotten in our life experience and our journey here. But the framework is so expansive and so wide that to really apply it, most of us would go insane, right? So we have to, um, to apply it in its fullness. So we have to dulce it out in modicum of understanding and go through it over and over and over again. And that's why we run these rites every year. But I'm saying this to say that I'm inviting all of the men to adjoin a coma king. If you are a man who is looking to release traumatic ills, if you are a man who is confused about cultural orientation and how to link with brothers of diverse ethnic groups and spiritual backgrounds to do collective work as black men, or if you are disempowered with your efforts to stand us up as a collective group, if you are having challenge in your intimate relationship or you are not able to create and sustain an intimate relationship, if you are lost and unaware of what your purpose is in your life, you absolutely need a right to passage. Finally, if your wellness and your health is not at a level 10, which there isn't a black man that is currently in the Western world who, who is because your health is the composite of your physical strength your emotional and psychological well-being and your social well-being. So our wellness is made up of several components that are not just our physiology, right? So if you are a man who's facing these challenges, and frankly, I don't know a black man who isn't facing those challenges, the greatest one of which, if you're lonely in this world that is designed and um intent on your destruction, you are probably a man who needs to link with loyal brotherhood of a like minds with diverse backgrounds and talents that can protect 
and increase your power, your awareness, your acumen around manhood, then you absolutely need a rites of passage, despite age. So I am offering and I am the guide and simply a guide, um, not the ruler or any such thing, but I am the guide to a 14-week rites of passage called a coma king, a culturally based rites that is designed to increase emotional fitness and social responsibility in black men. And it is designed for any black man who defines himself or wants to increase his effectuation as a scholar, a lover, a warrior, and a king. So the 14-week rites begin soon. In, in 24 hours, we have the final orientation where we're asking men and we are inviting women to come out to a very brief overview of what a rights is, why a rights is important, and then the dynamics, the structure and the dynamics of the Akoma King Rites of Passage. Then the following week, we will start officially for those that have signed up and we begin this 14-week odyssey. But I invite sisters and children because I want us all to start to develop a vision of what manhood is supposed to look like. Because in the absence of our culture and as a, a reflection of our ma'afa, as Babu Infudishi said in this writing, we have lost our orientation. We have lost our understanding. We have lost our ability to define and refine what manhood is as we find ourselves in the challenges that we find ourselves. So I'm inviting you to come out the link to join the Q&A is in this description and the link to join the rights for any men who want to go to the to page, investigate, see what they see and get an understanding of what we are striving to create <clears throat> and what we will create because we have been doing these rights for 25 years and we're always successful. So... We want to keep pushing the envelope, as it were, or passing the baton into manhood, from malehood, boyhood into manhood, and talking about how we refine and how we connect and how we evolve and how we purify and how we elevate what authentic, classical, indigenous, black manhood is in the world, because it is sorely being misrepresented and almost completely absent to the investigative eye, right? So I'm inviting you to come out. Please share this message with any men who you think would benefit from becoming a better social scholar, who would, be, who would benefit from becoming uh, emotionally charged and emotionally present lover of his woman and his people, a warrior, a protector who advances and defends that which he believes is valuable and know how to do that in a multitude of spaces, in the, especially in this false politically correct time of our oppressors. And then ultimately, anyone who wants to become sovereign of a greater level, a, a wise decision maker and a ruler of himself, not others, but a ruler of himself that inspires others to submit to his rule. If you know men like this, please share this video, share these links so that they can explore a coma king. And I'm looking forward to serving you. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone tomorrow. We meet at 7 p.m. and we will be going over the exact structure of the Akoma King Rites of Passage. So until that time, as always, I'm greeting you in the most sincere love and peace. Your brother, your servant, Haru 
Mancho Afi Oding Momar Idu Niakoma.